Hey, hey, this is Mr. Brusher again. Today we're going to be working with decimals, part two. We're going to be learning how to divide whole numbers when the quotient is a decimal value. And again, you should always still use estimation to make sure your answer is reasonable, and then check your work at the end by multiplying the divisor times the quotient to get the dividend. Let's start with a practice problem. See if you can solve the following problem. 21 divided by 6 equals. Go ahead and key in your answer with a clicker or write it down on your piece of paper. If you got the answer 3 and 5 tenths, you are correct. Now, for those of you that got the answer 3 and 3 tenths, I'm going to show you where you made your mistake. Also, some of you may have gotten the answer 33 tenths. You made two mistakes. Or you may have gotten 35 as your answer. There, you simply misplaced your decimal. Let's look at some other examples. Here we have some sample problems. 32 divided by 5. First, I'm going to rewrite the problem. Then I'm going to solve it just like they're whole numbers. 5 does not go into 3, so I put a 0 or an x to hold the place value. I could actually multiply this out and subtract and bring my 3 uh, down and then bring my 2 down. If that makes it easier for you, you can do that. Or you can just move on and say, how many times does 5 go into 32? It goes 6 times. And now you have two left over. Now, many of you probably thought that you take this two and you place it back up here. But that is not what we want to do. Because that is not two tenths. That's two out of a total of five. So that's actually two fifths. What we need to do is add a decimal behind this number and a zero. This will not change the value, but it gives us another digit to work with. We can bring the 0 down then, and 5 goes into 20 four times. 4 times 5 is 20, and we're left with 0. Now, the last thing, you're going to bring that decimal straight up. And finally, you can check by multiplying your quotient times your divisor to get the dividend. All right, let's move on to the next problem. Next one, see if you can do this one on your own. Now we will do it together. Six goes into two zero times. Again, you can multiply zero times six and subtract, or you could just say, how many times does 6 go into 21? 6 goes into 21 three times, which is 18, and we're left with a 3. Now, many of you may have thought that this 3 goes up here and would sit behind the decimal point, but that is not true. In this case, we have to actually add that 0 behind the decimal point and bring the 0 down. So now we say, how many times does 6 go into 30? And it goes 5 times. Again, checking your work, and you could use estimation. We know that if we use a compatible number, 24 divided by 6 is equal to 4. So my answer should be a little bit less than 4. And 3 and 5 tenths is a little bit less than 4. Now let's do the last problem. See if you can do it on your own first. Okay. We're going to do it together. 85. Oh, I better use a different color. Let's use a brighter one. 85 divided by 8. 8 goes in 8 once, and I subtract. Bring down my 5. 8 does not go into 5. So what I have to do is put a 0 up here. 0 times 8 is 0. When I subtract, I get a 5. And again, I'm going to put a decimal point, and I'm going to add a 0. Some people tend to skip this, and they start bringing the next digit down right here. 
But we have to remember, we still have to place our zero in that place value. And this digit will actually come right here. How many times does 8 go into 50? 6, which is 48. We subtract, and we have 2 remaining. And again, we're going to have to bring down another 0. How many times does 8 go into 20? Yes, 2 times, which is 16. Subtract, and we're left with 4. Again, bringing the 0 down. And finally, how many times does 8 go into 40? Well, it goes into it. 5 times. 5 times 8 is 40, so I would have 0 remaining. Don't forget to bring that decimal straight up. And then check your work. Again, if you were estimating 85 divided by 8, well, 80 divided by 8 is 10. So it should be a little bit larger than 10. And 88 divided by 8 is 11. So my answer is between 10 and 11. Again, we can check through the answers to see if you got the correct answer for each of these. 10 and 625 thousandths. Now, here's some other practice problems you can try. Go ahead and pause the screen, try to do them, and then we'll go over the answers. Okay, hopefully on this first one, you knew that since you were your divisor, had a decimal in it, that you must move that decimal one place to the right. You would also then move the decimal in your dividend one place to the right. So the problem would be rewritten as 295 divided by 4. If I estimate this, I know my answer should be pretty close to 75. Because 75 times 4 is equal to 300. Pretty close. Yes, just had to check my math in my head again. All right, so if we check your work, your answer should have been 73 and 75 hundredths. Don't forget that when you add that decimal in there behind the 5, you can add extra zeros. And the decimal will go straight up at this point. Since there is no decimal in my divisor anymore. You'll have to do the same thing for this problem. Go ahead and try it on your own. Now we're going to check the work. Did you get... 315 thousandths? If you did, you are absolutely correct. Moving on to the next problem. Here we have 2 and 1 tenth divided by 4 tenths. Now remember, this problem is has a decimal in my divisor. And if we think of this as a real world example, it might be like money. Except for 2 and 1 tenth would be how much money? That's right. If you guessed $2 and, well, would it be a dime or would it be a penny? Absolutely. It would be a dime, not a penny. Because $2 and 1 tenth is actually 10 hundredths. And we're going to divide that by 40 cents, or 4 tenths. So I'm going to write 0 0.40, if I think of it as money. Now, remember, each dollar over here is the same as 10 dimes. So if I remove my dollar, and you can see I have 10 dimes here, I could do the same here, remove the second dollar, and again, I have 10 dimes here. Now, what I'm trying to do is divide them by 40 cents. So I can move 1, 2, 3, 
40 cents here, and then I can move 10, 20, 30, 40 cents here, move 40 cents here, and then I'll move 40 cents over here. Here's 40 cents, and now I have one dime left. What am I going to do with that? That's right. I'm going to have to break it down into pennies or smaller parts. That's essentially what we're doing when we're dividing this decimal. Now, I'm going to go back to my original problem. 2 and 1 tenth divided by 4 tenths. The first thing we need to do is move that decimal one place to the right in my divisor. And then I'll need to do the same thing for the dividend. Now I have 21 divided by 4. So now I'm ready to solve this problem. I'm going to erase that, and we'll make this a little bit brighter color here. Okay. 4 goes into 2, 0 times. 4 goes into 21, 5 times, which is 20. When I subtract, I have 1 left over. Now what do I do? That's right. Add that decimal and a couple zeros behind it. Bring a zero down. How many times does 4 go into 10? That's correct. 2 times, and 2 times 4 is 8. When I subtract, I have 2, and I bring my zero down again. 4 goes into 20, then, 5 times. Now, where does the decimal go in my answer? Straight up. Good job. Well, I hope this helped you out with dividing decimals for part two.